Hello, hello. Good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hey, good evening, guys. How are you today? Doing fine. So so. <laughs> so so, so creo yo. <laughs> El lunes, so I know. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. El lunes y el cuerpo lo sabe también. Sí. No se lo aplica el viernes. Nice. So, anyway, eh, I know that it's, it's Monday, we're just starting the week, so it's kind of eh, difficult to start, but eh, let's do it, right? So let's eh, give the last effort of the day. And that's it. Let's get down to business. First things first. Wait, give me a second here. Okay, so first things first, we're going to take attendance, right? It seems some people are going to be late today, it seems. But, well, let's hope that they can connect later on during the day. I mean, during the night. <laughs> okay. So let's see, I'm going to take attendance then as usual. Uh, you pretty much, uh, once you hear your name, turn on your camera and we wait. Mm, wait, just give me a second here. That it seems there is some mistake here. Hmm. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Ana Beatriz, el jueves. Oh, thank you. No, 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 le iba a preguntar. Falsa <laughs> alarma. No, le iba, le iba a preguntar. El jueves 26 fue el día que, que fue que se puso la vacuna. ¿Verdad que no? ¿O sí? Sí, sí. Fue el día 26. Ajá. Y, y el bueno. 27 que no el me conecté tampoco, ah, porque estoy así tres días. Sí, es cierto, es cierto. Sí, así estaba viendo, pero creí que yo me había confundido con la fecha, pero no. Ah, pues sí, estamos bien. Ah, ese día. ah ok, nice. Excellent. All right, then. So, let's see. So, let's start then. So, today is the sixth. Hoy oh, sí. Ana Beatriz Campo de Guzmán. There you go. Presentita. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So we continue with Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga Mejia. Presentita. All right. Thank you very much, Blanquita. Y continue with Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. All right. Thank you, Carlos. Very good. And then we have Carlos Javier Crespin López. Carlos Javier, not here yet. So we continue with Christian Ernesto Lasso. Present teacher. All right, thank you very much, Christian. So then we continue with Denise Grisel Brizuela. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Grisel. Nice. Uh, then we have Ember Giovanni Polio, but I guess he's having problems with his connection now. So don't think he's going to join us, eh, at least not now. So we continue with Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Francisca Elizabeth, not here yet. So we continue with Jose Eduardo Guzmán. Jose Eduardo, not here. Okay, not here yet. So we continue with Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Juan Carlos, not here it seems. So we continue then with Karen Vanessa Morataya. Karen Vanessa, not here. So we continue with Mr. Luis Alfonso Martinez. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> How are you, Luis? So good? I'm fine, teacher. Thank you. Excellent. Very good, Luis. Welcome. So then we continue with Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. 
Nice to have you here. Maria Elena, so we continue with uh, Mr. Nelson Gavarrete Merino. I'm here, teacher. Good All morning. Right. Good evening. Nice to have you here, Hels uh, Nelson. So then we continue with Omar Francisco Hernandez. Listen, teacher. All right. Thank you very much, Omar. Welcome. Uh, then we have Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Oscar Arnulfo, not here yet, all right. And then we have uh, Jenny Suleima Santos. Jenny Suleima, not here yet, okay. So let's see then, let's get down to business. Let's start with today's class. Uh, before we continue with something different today, we're going to just have a little review on the present perfect today. So let's just check some information or let's just review some information on the present perfect. So let's see, let's see. I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see it here. Let's see. Okay, so here it goes. All right. So to review some information on the present perfect, we're going to play a Kahoot on the different, well, to review the structure and some of the uses of these things. So as we regularly do, we're just going to go to the website, kahoot.it and then you enter the pin number that you have on the screen. Hi, teacher, ya pasó listo. Hello, hello, yes, I did. So, I'm sorry? Oh, <laughs> nice, okay, don't worry. So, note it that you are here now. So thank you, thank you for letting us know. Alrighty. So let's see. All right, let's wait for the rest to join. So there we have Carlos, very good. Grisel, nice. All right, we have a number, but that's okay. <laughs> 970. <laughs> All right, we have Omar, Beatriz, nice. Let's wait. One more minute. And then we start. Louis, it's very good. Christian, nice. All right then. So, Maria Elena, very good. So we're going to start then with this review and we wait. Let's start with this review then. And remember, first, I'm going to share with you some information about the present perfect. And then we start with the questions. So. No me carga, teacher. I'm sorry? No me carga. Uh, intente darle actualizar o refrescar la página. Eh, tal vez, tal vez, este se ha quedado como... Sí, dando vueltas. Ajá. <ríe> se ha quedado directo. <ríe> All right. Ok, then. So, don't worry. Aunque ya hayamos eh, comenzado, tal vez en lo que estamos haciendo el repaso, eh, se pueden conectar los que aún no han podido eh, conectarse. So, let's see. El pin siempre aparece aquí abajito, eh, por ahí lo van a ver. 
So don't worry about it. Acá está el pin. So there you go. Okay. Uh, well, for the rest, uh, first things first. So what is the present perfect? What do you remember about the uses of the present perfect? Who remembers? When do I use the present perfect? Why do I use it for? Any ideas? No ideas? Let's see. Let me ask directly to someone here. In, in uh -huh. the past, in continue in the future, in the present. Ah, very good. An action that started in the past, but still continues or still affects the present and mm, sometimes even the future, right? Very good. Nice, Marilena. So, bingo, right? So, we might say, or we might also say that we, whenever we're using the present perfect, we're talking about uh, the past, but it's not a, let's say, a, a specific a point in time in the past it's something very vague it's something general and it's an action that started or that occurred during this time right and we're not being that specific about that whenever we use the present perfect so very good now wait here is what about the structure for the present perfect uh, easy, right? So here we have like the structure for a sentence, an affirmative sentence in the present perfect. That is subject, as with any other sentence, have or has, right? Which is the auxiliary that we will use in the present perfect, plus our dear friend, the past participle, right? So if you remembered, well, I told you, try to start memorizing those past participles since it's going to be a, one of the most important things to use the present perfect. So a, try to memorize them, right? That's the, that's the trick here, a, memorizing past participles. If you know them, you're done, you're set. So you can master any perfect tense that you want. So, and then, well, finally we have a complement right to uh, conclude the idea in the sentence so there you go now let's see if you can use it if you can use it in context so here we go with some questions and now you select the corresponding answer for each statement so let's see if you can make it here we go so number one what about this one what's missing in the sentence i played basketball with some friends. Is it do, have, am, did? What do you think? Have, exactly. I am play? No, right? So we're talking, remember, about the present perfect. So we need to use the auxiliary have or has depending on the subject so in this case have i have played let's see first place grisel second omar christian carlos and the number so let's see next one has drunk coffee with cousins what about this one? Here we have two blank spaces. Be careful. Careful, careful. Think about it. Five, four, three, two, one. And... Let's see. All right. So here we have, she has drunk coffee with her friend so possessive possessives so here we have it cannot be they because we have has right if i use they then i would need have and not has so that's why i know it should be she not we either but 
remember possessives. I use she in the subject, but I cannot say your cousins because we're talking about her cousins. Suyos de ella, right, as we would say. So that's why we would use, she has drunk coffee with her cousins. So there you go. Let's see. All right, positions changing. Omar in the first place. Christian, Grisel, Carlos, and... 970-8332. No, just kidding. Let's see. Next one. I have this book. Hmm. Past participles. I have this book. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and red, very good. So if this is an irregular verb, right? So we have read, red, red. It's the same. I mean, it's written the same, but it's pronounced differently. The simple past and the past participle forms, eh, we pronounce them like if it's the color, right? Red. But we write that in the same way, R-E-A-D. So read, read it, uh, uh, no, right. That is just for um, regular verbs, right? E-D endings. So there you go. Let's see. All right, so we have Christian going to the first place and on fire, we have Omar e Grisel. Ember and Maria Elena, very good. Let's see, next one. Ah, so now, now that we have reviewed something about the affirmative structure of the present perfect, here we have a negative structure. So here we have, it's exactly the same with the only difference that we need to add not. So, where do I insert that word? Between the auxiliary, have and has, and my past participle. So it goes right in the middle of those two. So we can use also, remember we can use a contraction. I don't have to use it complete. I can say haven't or hasn't, especially if I'm speaking, right? If I'm speaking, use contractions. It's not going to hurt. So there you go. Let's see. Negative sentences. What about this one? You not written this letter. Not written this letter. Let's see. Time have exactly so we cannot use has with you remember has is only for he she and it nothing more nothing else so you have let's see all right positions changing christian still in the first place omar e carlos going up maria elena going up blanquita going up very good See the next one. Number two. Eat not celebrated her birthday. Eat not celebrated her birthday. All right, so we have it has not or it hasn't celebrated her birthday, very good. Let's see, next one. All right, Christian still in the first place. Maria Elena going up, Omar, Blanquita going up, and Carlos. Let's see, what about this one? Hmm, have not tried to reach the cup. What would it be? 
they exactly they have not tried to reach the cup so this or that would be like the only choice we have is because we cannot say he we don't use have with he or she or it the only one that can take have as an auxiliary is they in this case right good Christian on fire, Maria Elena, Omar, Blanquita, and Carlos. Next one. Huh. Questions. We can also ask questions with the present perfect. If you remember, we can say or we can uh, ask different types of questions with this tense too. So we can use, in this case, a, if it's a yes, no question, we start with, Auxiliary, have or has, my subject, the past participle, and the complement, right? So this structure is a little bit different, like from the affirmative or negative uh, sentences, but still, it's not that difficult. You just remember, auxiliary goes first, subject, and past participle. Acá separamos el sujeto del past participle. So, es la única en la que van separados por el sujeto, right? So, remember that's for questions. Here we go, let's see. What about this one? You drunk coffee today? It's a question, remember? What would it be? What would it be? Ah, have you drunk coffee today? Do you drink coffee today? Uh, uh, no. Uh, we would never use do with a past participle. So uh, uh, that's uh, that doesn't go together, right? So we need it have. All right, so Christian still on fire, Maria Elena, Carlos going up, Blanquita, and Omar. Next one. Has he the bread using the knife? Past participles. Past participles. And there you go, cut. Has he cut the bread using the knife? Cut it? No. Cut it just with one T? No way, Jose. So it's a, this one is an irregular one. So we say cut, simple present, cut, simple past, cut, past participle. It's the same, cut, cut, cut. So there you go. All right, so Christian still in the first place. Carlos going up, Maria Elena, Omar going up, and Blanquita. Almost there. Have visited Paris before? Who? A tricky one. All right, so have they visited Paris before? So again, here we have a auxiliary have. So there is no way in which we can use the third person singular. Here we have all the members of the third person singular. He, she, and it. So a, there is no way in which I can use they with I'm sorry, there's no way in that which I can use one of these pronouns with have. The only one that is acceptable here, they, right? There you go. Next one. Same positions. I guess this is the last one. I know, not yet. True or false. 
We use have, we. I, you, we, they. True or false? We use have with I, you, we, they. Is that true? Is that false? And true. I just mentioned that in the previous exercise. So I only use have with these pronouns, right? Not with the third person singular, just with these pronouns over here. So let's see. All right, same positions. So here we go for the last one. Two or false. We don't use has with he, she, it. We don't use has with he, she, it. True, false, maybe. False. False, absolutely, positively, false. So we cannot, uh, uh, well, we use, actually, we have to use has with the third person singular. That's this, those three are the only ones that can use has, actually. So definitely false statement. So final scores, let's see. We have third place, Carlos. Second place, Maria Elena. And the first place, king of the present perfect, Christian. Very good. Congratulations. There you go. Wow, Christian. Perfect score. Damn. Very good. Excellent. All right. So that's pretty much it, right? This is a, just a little review on the basics for the present perfect, a, pretty much the structure that we will use with an affirmative, negative sentences and questions. So again, I insist, the only difficult thing for the present perfect is the past participle, right? So that's the only thing that you need to learn. Memorize them, study them so that you have no problems with this tense. Okay, now, speaking of this, let's have one more practice here. Wait, no, not this yet, this one. Okay, if you check a page, that's page 32. On page 32, you're going to find a little um, exercise is so that you can use affirmative and negative statements with the prompts or with the patterns that you have there in, in, on exercise five. So there you have some parts of the sentence that you need to use, but still you need to complete the, the sentences so that you can use or so that it matches the structure of the present perfect. So what are we going to do? We're going to, let's see, we're going to work here in groups so that we can complete this exercise. So let's see, we have, let me see. So we have in group number one, Ana Beatriz Campos, group number two, eh, Blanquita, eh, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Group number one, Ana Beatriz Campos, Blanquita, Omar. So you're group number one. Group number two, I have Karen, Maria Elena, and Nelson. You're group number two. Group number three, I have Juan Carlos, Luis Alfonso, and uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, wait, I have, I forgot that Nelson is repeated. So then we have here, Juan Carlos, Luis Alfonso, and Carlos Antonio. So you're group number three. And then we have a last group, 
Christian, Ember, and Jenny. All right, so you're going to be the last group here. Okay, then. So, and what are you going to do? We are going to complete first the patterns that we have there. The patterns, uh, we're going to make them match so that we can have uh, sentences in the present perfect. That's one thing. The second thing we're going to do is uh, exercise six. We're going to get in pairs and we're going to create a conversation. If you remember, we related this topic to troubleshooting and there we had a previous conversation in which they were asking about some problems with a machine. So you're gonna try to do something similar. If you can take the previous um, conversation as a guide, right? No la van a copiar igualita, so como ella, right? So just like that. And from that conversation, you can base uh, yours, right? But remember, you are going to include one more person. So what are you going to use in the conversation? The structure of the present perfect. You can ask questions. Uh, you, well, it's up to you, right? Uh, up to your creativity. Or if you want to talk about experiences, that's, uh, that's okay too, right? As long as you use the structure of the present perfect. So let's see, any questions before we start? No, clear as crystal, clear as Coca-Cola. <laughs> All right, clear as crystal. So I'm going to open the rooms then and so that you can start working here. And we oh, yeah, have Ellie, I haven't included Ellie in a group. So let's good see. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good <laughs> evening. I'm sorry. Ellie, Ellie. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see. So Ellie, I'm going to send you with, all right, Karen and Maria Elena. So let me see. So that's room number two. There you go, Ellie. All right, nice. Thank you, teacher. Anytime. Okay, guys, so you can join your corresponding groups now. If you have problems to join, just let me know. All right, there you go.
Hello, Jose Eduardo. Can you hear me? Jose Eduardo, are you there? Jose Eduardo, Jose Eduardo. Okay. Hello, hello. Hey, Oscar. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you driving? Hi, hello, teacher. Hey, hello, hello. So I guess you're, you're driving now or you're in, on your way home? Okay, Oscar, don't worry, uh, that's fine. Right now, uh, well, the rest of the team is working in exercises five and six on page 32. So they are uh, solving an exercise and creating a conversation. So I'm going to include you in a group, maybe just for you to be a listener uh, so that you can be part of the activity, but it's okay. If you cannot answer, that's fine. So, I, I I I can teach. Uh, I drive into my house. Oh, I see. Okay, don't worry. This moment. If that's the case, you can just uh, stay connected because I just sent them. Okay, so they are going to take some time or some minutes maybe to create this conversation. So, uh, once you arrive home, you let me know.
Okay, let's see. So about to, oh, well, the rest is about to come. Let's just wait for them. All right. So it's raining really hard here. A ver si no se nos va la luz, chicos. Let's see. <laughs> Ojalá que no, pero el inter se ha puesto lento. Sí, hubo un ratito que yo también me quedé así como, como con el inter un poco inestable, pero... Sí, a mí me está saliendo el mensaje, sí. Señal, señal baja. Sí. Ah, ok, ya, yeah, same y here. Y lo juego como robo por ratos. <risa> <risa> Ajá, hola. Eh, good evening, teacher. Uh, hey, yo no puedo, no puedo encender la cámara porque pierdo la señal. Ah, ok, yes. Este, no, no hay problema. Creo que ahorita por la lluvia, si alguien tiene igual problemas con el Inter, al apagar la cámara se, digamos, se gasta, se usa menos ancho de banda y podría que le funcione mejor. So, solo no se van a dormir, vea. <ríe> so, then, that's fine. Don't worry, ever. Ok, then. So let's see, let's see. Well, I hope that you had finished with both the exercises. So let's just check what you did. But before we actually check that, I'm gonna take attendance because it's almost nine. So let me see. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to take attendance now. So, there you go. Okay, guys. So, we have Ana Beatriz Campos de Guzman. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Beatriz. Then we go with Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you very much, Blanquita. We continue with Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you very much, Charlie. Good. Then we continue with Mr. Carlos Javier Crespin. Carlos Javier, not here. All right, so it's, it's gone, missed in action. So we have Christian Ernesto Lasso. Christian. Maybe he's having problems with the Imagine, internet right I'm now. Imagine, are you happy, babe? Okay. <laughs> All right. Gracias por avisarnos. All right, you can go. Okay. Nelson, you are you're not a mute. Mucho no detalles. Mute. Ajá. <laughs> tranquilo, Nelson. Tranquilo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the big, big okay, let's see. So, Denise Grisel Brizuela. Denise Grisel. La conexión ella estaba bien mal, discuso ella por la lluvia. Oh, I see. Okay. Mr. Besson. All right. Hello, hello. ¿Quién me dijo present por ahí? Ember. Oh, there you go. Nice. Bueno, con usted vamos ahorita. <laughs> so thank you, Ember. Very good. Ember Giovanni Polio. Nice. Yeah, teacher. Sorry. Acaba de poner Grisel ahí que no puede entrar. Ah, uh, ok. Híjole, entonces tiene que tener. Es la conexión entonces. Bueno, pero ella estaba aquí. So that's fine. No worries. Okay, thank you. So we continue then with uh, Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Thank you very much, Ellie. Nice. So we continue then with Jose Eduardo Guzman Alvarez. Present teacher. All right, thank you very much, Jose Eduardo. Nice. Uh, we continue with Juan Carlos Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Very good. So we continue with Karen Vanessa Morataya. Present. All right. Thank you, Karen. Nice. 
So next, Luis Alfonso Martinez. Present teacher. All right, thank you very much, Luis. So we continue with Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. Present. All right, thank you, Maria Elena, very good. We continue with Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Present teacher, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> ya regresó del baño, that's fine. <laughs> Mentira, that's fine, all right. <laughs> okay. okay, there you go. So next person, we have Omar Francisco Hernández. All right, thank you very much, Omar, good. So we continue with Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Thank you very much, Oscar. Nice. And last but not least, we have Jenny Suleima Santos. Present. All right. Thank you very much, Jenny. Excellent. Okay, then. So now let's see. Let's check what you did while you were working with your teams. So first things first, let's check first exercise five. So let's see the sentences that you created here with the present perfect. Okay, so here we go. All righty, so let me see. Uh, what do you have in number one? Let's see. Um, nom, 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 nom. Omar. Omar, Omar. What what do you have in number one, Omar? How did you write that sentence? Can you repeat it again? Because we you're cutting off. Mm, but it's not a question. It's a, an affirmative sentence. Yes. Mm, no. Affirmative sentence. Mario. We start with Mario, right? Okay. Mario has changed the shoes. Excellent. That's the thing. Mario has changed the views, right? So there you go. That's the thing. Here, we don't have a question mark, so it seems it's just an affirmative sentence. So if it's an affirmative sentence, we start with the subject. And once we start with the subject, we continue with the structure of the present perfect. Has or have plus the past participle. So nice, Omar. Omar, select another person. Huh? Denise. Who? Denise. Ah, Grisel, are you there? No, Grisel. Denise. Denise. Ah, Jenny. Ah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yo escuchaba a Denise. <laughs> <Yo> también, <laughs> me aduda. <laughs> seré yo, no seré yo, decía Jenny. <laughs> Verdad, ya ven. <laughs> ok, la, la señal, la señal. So, Jenny, entonces. Jenny, hey. no, tú. Tú, the production hasn't stopped. Very good. The production hasn't, hasn't stopped. stopped. Very good. Nice. The production hasn't stopped. Excellent. Very good. Great. So, Jenny, you select another person. Uh, Maria Elena. All right. Maria Elena. Let's see. Maria Elena, number three. Number three. Our team have fixed equipment. Our team. Uh -huh. team have fixed uh -huh. the equipment. equipment all righty our team have fixed the equipment hmm 
there's something about that that I don't think it's okay. What about team? Is singular or plural? Oh, team, nuestro, plural. Aha, aha. Singular or plural, team? Plural. Plural? For yeah. me, it's plural, uh -huh. porque uh -huh. nuestro indica varias personas. Pero ¿cuántos equipos? One. <laughs> no, <pero fue laughs> exactly. Ah, exactly. <laughs> Correctísimo lo que acaba de decir él. Y puede haber dos o más. <laughs> equipos, right? So, this is what we call a collective noun. Y eso es lo que nosotros llamaríamos un nombre o un sustantivo colectivo. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que hace referencia a un grupo, como ustedes mencionaron, de personas, ¿verdad? Suena como eh, que es, hay varias personas, pero integran una sola cosa. Por ejemplo, acá, el equipo. Y otro collective noun, family. Otro collective noun, group, right? ¿Y qué hago con esos collective nouns? Los puedo pluralizar porque los estoy contando como una sola cosa. En un partido de fútbol, I have two teams, right? Team one, team two, so it's two teams. Eh, nine groups, for example. So, siempre que tengamos un collective noun, lo vamos a tomar como si fuera eh, singular. Ajá. Eh, sin embargo... No se me van a confundir con esto, pero sin embargo, en Inglaterra, en inglés británico, y se pueden usar los dos. Se sí, puede considerar. Eso, sí, no, me imaginé, por eso hago la, la aclaración, porque me imaginé que, que, que por ahí venía la cosa. Sí, es cierto. Nos acordamos del inglés. Del británico, sí, pues sí. Nice. So, si bien es algo que se puede hacer, o sea, en el inglés británico, y nosotros nos apegamos al estándar del inglés norteamericano, right? Que es el que tenemos más cerca de nosotros. El otro está al otro lado del charco, así que no. <ríe> nice. So, our team has fixed. Sí, aunque sea más bonito el otro. <ríe> ah, sí, definitivamente. Yo amo el inglés británico, pero y toda la cultura, de hecho, eh, británica es, es más atractiva, pero ni modo. Y mucha gente se, me, me ha preguntado, por ejemplo, ¿por qué enseñamos inglés americano en, en el país o, o en, en, es, en, en América? ¿no? Y la respuesta es sencilla. Cada quien en la parte del mundo que está cuando uno quiere aprender inglés, aprende donde está más cerca. Y eso tomamos como un estándar. Para nosotros serían los Estados Unidos. Las personas en Europa, por ejemplo, eh, los españoles, los franceses, los italianos, toda esa gente aprende inglés británico. No van a aprender un inglés de Estados Unidos. Por eso todos tienen el mismo, como que logran, o sea, si lo logran aprender, lo, tienen ese acento a inglés británico y ocupan las palabras del inglés británico también sin embargo tenemos una ventaja el inglés americano es lo que se considera una lengua franca que es una lengua franca es, una lengua, es un idioma que se utiliza en los negocios y sí prácticamente en los negocios a nivel internacional y es un estándar el inglés británico no eh, Lamentablemente, el que sí es el estándar es el inglés americano. So, nos conviene hasta cierto punto porque es lo que, como les decía, si se considera un estándar, es lo que la gente, digamos, en teoría debería de entendernos, ¿no? En otros países, y en el caso de que nos mandaran por trabajo o a otro lado, y podría ser que, que nos sirva más. Pero siempre es más bonito el británico. Anyway. <ríe> so, next. Pero, Aquí hay, aquí hay una academia, bueno, de las que yo sé, hay una academia de inglés británico, aunque estemos más cerca de, de América. 
Está el, 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 está, está la escuela, la escuela siempre británica. Siempre tiene opciones. Sí, está, está, está exacto. la escuela, sí. la escuela británica. De hecho, exacto, se llama, eh, bueno, está la, la academia, hay academia británica, está la escuela americana. Uno elige, pero es lo que les digo, o sea, como un estándar y se enseña inglés americano. Y sí. si ustedes quieren aprender aparte, como una variación, igual, ¿verdad? o sea, es, deberíamos de hecho conocer las dos variantes porque uno nunca sabe. Y hay palabras como en el español, es la diferencia es como el español de acá, de América y el español de España. Y acá tenemos palabras que allá no se utilizan de la misma manera o llaman de otra manera cosas que para nosotros son diferentes, ¿no? Y vocabulario diferente, acento diferente. Lo mismo es el inglés de Estados Unidos y el inglés de, y de Inglaterra, ¿no? Hay cosas tan sencillas como las galletas, como las cookies en Estados Unidos, y allá son biscuits, right? Entonces, cositas así que, que de repente nos podría pasar que alguien nos ofrezca una galleta, por ejemplo, y nos quedemos como de, ¿qué onda, mira? Biscuits, ¿qué serán esas cosas? Son los del Kentucky, van a decir. So, y son solo galletas, ¿no? <ríe> so, there you go. But good. All right. So, let me see then. Maria Elena, you choose another person. Uh, otro, veamos. Um, Ana. Ana, let's see. Anita Beatriz, number four. For teacher is Jenny has not plugged the car. Jenny has not plugged the cords. The cords. Yeah. There you go. Very good. Nice, Beatriz. So, let's see. Choose another person. Is Oscar. Oscar. I guess Oscar viene manejando. So, another person, eh, Beatriz. Eh, Carlos Rivas. All right, Charlie, Charlie, are you there? Me? Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Number All five. Right. Yes, number five, Carlos. The secretary uh -huh. has made a note copies. This we oui. the secretary. Secretary has, has made, made uh -huh. enough, enough copies. Copies, very good, nice. Has made enough copies. Excellent, Charlie. So let's see, choose the last one. Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, let's see. So number six, Ellie. No sé cómo se pronuncia, pero the technician. Technician. ¿Cómo? Technician. The technician Ajá. has checked the has connect. Check. Has checked the Well, that connector in this case. The, uh, very good. With, there you go. The technician has checked the connector. Excellent. There you go. Bingo. All right. So this is the way in which the six sentences should have uh, been stated. As you can see, nothing out of this world. We follow the same structure. Being affirmative or negative sentences, it's pretty much the same structure there. Just memorize, keep this in mind all the time, past participles, but that's good. Okay, now let's see about those conversations. So do I have volunteers? Any volunteers for these conversations? No volunteers. My teacher. All right, there you go. That's the spirit. <laughs> the page number 33. Uh, 33. No, uh, you were supposed to create a conversation, Ellie. Exercise six. Ah, no, 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 no
<laughs> no, pero es que... No, oh, my God. What? But no, I no, told you. Ah, that's not too friendly. Yo acababa de venir, Okay, okay. <laughs> so you were working with Maria Elena, Nelson, and Ellie. Okay, so nice. Y, um, who finished? Who actually finished the conversation? But you didn't have enough time. Solo contestamos las preguntas, teacher. Teacher. Oh, I teacher. see. Ajá. Luis, Sorry. yes. Ajá. Sí, nuestro grupo hizo una conversación. Ajá. Pero me gustaría que la revise. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Please, please okay? Yes. Let's do it. Let's see. Thank you, teacher. Comparte right. la pantalla. Okay. Let's see. All right, so we have in this group, Carlos, Juan Carlos, Luis, and Oscar. That was a listener in that, well, I guess it's going to connect. Okay. All right, so All right. let's see. Okay, hello, Carlos. I have a problem with my Twitter. Mm -hmm. Okay, Luis, in this moment, I have talking to the technic technical technician. Okay. Technician. Okay. Juan Carlos, please help. Please help use help with us? the problem. <clears throat> help us. Uh -huh. Juan Carlos, please help us with the problem of the loose printer. Okay, Carlos, in this moment, ask to the Luis what is the problem? Luis. Tell me, what is the problem with the printer? No print. Okay, Luis. <laughs> no printing. Okay, it's all right. Only that teacher, please. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Good. So a couple of things. Remember that uh, what it says, I have, uh, I has talked. No, I have talked. Because we only use has with the third uh, person singular, with he, she, or it. So we would say, I have talked. Have, and that's the has. In, in that line, Luis. So let's see here. Donde dice moment. Okay, Luis, in this moment, la segunda línea. Ahí. En vez de has, have. Have talked. There you go. Eh, all right, nice. Have talked con la idea, así como lo tenía. Have talked. Uh -huh. Then we have eh, the technician. Technician lleva H después de la C. And let me see. Help us with the problem of the Louis printer. This is for everyone, right? I know this structure is what we would use in Spanish. For example, when I say the father of my best friend, I don't say that in, in, in English. What do I say? My best friend's father. So in this case, I would say, uh, please help us with the problem of uh, or Louis printer's problem. Right, help us with Louis printer problem. Louis printer problem. So, le ponemos un apóstrofo a Louis para indicar el posesivo. Uh -huh. There you go. And there we have el problema de el impresor de Louis. Acá, bueno. Utilizo este posesivo del apóstrofo y la S. Pero eh, como Luis ya termina en S, entonces solo le pongo el apóstrofo, right? Ajá, so, borramos la S, exacto. Siempre que el nombre termine en S, como Carlos, Luis. Eh, no se pone el apóstrofo. Solo ponemos el apóstrofo, no ponemos la S. 
Ajá. Okay. Exacto. Si fuera otro nombre, como Rolando, por ejemplo, Rolando's, right? Rolando's pet eh, is a dog. Right? La mascota de Rolando es un perro. Right? Para identificar la pertenencia de. Ajá, exactly. We only use this possessive with people. People, we can also include companies, the name of a company, and even countries. But then with objects, then it's not possible, right? But in this case, it, since it's the belonging of a person, we can use it. Acá es la pertenencia de Luis. Entonces, si utilizamos el apóstrofo y la S. Okay. It's very good. Excellent. <coughs> And let's see, uh, what is the problem with the printer? Aquí faltó un question mark, y aquí donde decimos no print, mejor diríamos it's not printing. It's not printing. No está imprimiendo, right? It's not printing. It's not printing. Uh -huh. ING. Very good. Nice. Y aquí checked, que sería con C y con K, en vez de la Q y la U. Checked. Ah, exactly. There you go. A connection double N. And that would do. All right. But good. Good. So it was ah, nice. Bueno. Ah, bueno. All right. Excellent. Very Pero good. No te, no te so, no te thank you very much. Sí, que no se mucho. Nice. <laughs> all right, okay, all right. Thank you, teacher. Nine point nine. Very good. Excellent. Good job, guys. Excellent. Someone else who actually finished the conversation? Someone else? Someone else? No? All right. No worries. I know that some of you had actually some connection issues. Algunos compañeros se desconectaron. So that's fine. We're just going to leave it like that. Because of time, we're just going to move on. Okay, then. So let me see. We're going to continue then with something else. I guess that we got the idea about the present perfect and when to use the present perfect. So we can move on with something else here. And here we have a different thing today. And it all starts, uh, it starts with a conversation. I'm going to read the conversation and then you tell me if you identify something weird or maybe something curious about this conversation. So, I'm going to read it. You just listen right now. It says, eh, good morning. This is Mr. Ruiz. Hello, Mr. Ruiz. This is Yanni. I have a situation. Hi, Yanni. Tell me what's the matter. I'm not feeling well today. My stomach is killing me. I'm as sick as a dog. Okay, I understand. Eh, two days ago, I was feeling under the weather too. Oh, really? There's something going on around. I hope you're feeling better. Oh, yeah, I'm in tip-top shape. Take it easy, Yanni. Hope to see you on Monday. Thanks a lot, Mr. Ruiz. Have a nice rest of the day. So there you go. So let's see. Um, any something weird about this conversation, something that calls your attention? Uh -huh. Or no, completely understandable. Teacher. Uh -huh. Tell me. What is the meaning? What is the meaning? I'm a sick as a dog. <laughs> ah, there you go. Ahí está. <laughs> Ahí está el detalle. <laughs> so, in this conversation, there are some expressions that they sound weird, right? They are like, what? What the heck are we talking about? Sick as a dog, right? So that means really, really sick, right? I'm sick as a dog. 
So it's a different way of stating a normal idea. If, for example, my stomach is killing me. It's killing me, it's not in the literal sense, right? It's just a way to say something. If, then we have under the weather. What do you think that means to be or to feel under the weather? Any ideas? I was, I was feeling under. Uh huh. Uh, my 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 idea in the I'm a sick doctor. It's a it's a it's a sick. Eh, es una enfermedad fuerte por decir es un malestar fuerte. Uh huh. Para entender pues. Yeah. And what about under the weather? It significa under the weather. Oh, I feel yeah. under the weather. Bajo el... Bajo el clima, no sé qué. El clima. <laughs> es como que él también se ve sentir uh -huh. igual, entiendo yo. Ah, ajá, ajá. Under, under, under the weather, too. Ajá. Porque I was también. feeling, ajá, uh -huh. exactly. I was feeling oh. under the weather, too. Ok, ok. Okay, this I understand. Today I go, I was feeling older the weather too. Oh, okay. Exactly. Ajá. Entonces me entender de que también estaba enfermo, no? Se sentía igual. mal. Exactly. So the thing here is these are what we know were these expressions, they are what we know as idioms. What are idioms? Idioms, no significa idiomas, right? Idioms, they, they stand for idiomatic expressions. So, ¿qué pasa con estos idioms? No los traducimos literalmente. Uh, si nosotros los traducimos literalmente, eh, bueno, sería como, por ejemplo, este, ¿no? Me siento debajo del, del clima o ando bajo el clima, no sé cómo lo diríamos por ahí. Y entonces uno se queda, what? No tiene mucho sentido, ¿no? Traducirlo literalmente. So, the point with idioms is that we know or that we need to understand the meaning. So, exactly. I actually, um, I actually sent you an, an idiom in the chat. It's raining cats and dogs. If I take that, Literally like that, it's not that it's raining the, those animals, right? Cats and dogs. What does it mean? That it's raining really hard, right? It's a different way to say something trivial, probably, eh, with an expression, right? So um, this topic is why we sometimes don't understand some series, some movies, right? Because this is very common in English, the use of idioms. For example, a, an idiom that I like, beats me, right? Have you ever heard that expression before? Beats me? No, nobody? So for example, or take for example, a person asks me, hey, Rolando, what time is it? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. It beats me. I'm not wearing a watch today. Beats me, right? I'm not wearing a watch. I'm sorry. And then the other person is like, hmm. right? So if I take this literally, beat can mean a lot of stuff. Si yo voy, me voy al diccionario a googlear qué es beat. Voy a encontrar un montón de cosas, desde que es pegar, latir, eh, it could be like even related to something related to music, so like the rhythm of something, etcétera, etcétera, y ninguno pega con el contexto en el que yo dije la palabra o la expresión. What does it mean? Y this, I don't know, right? Beats me. 
right? If si yo le digo, for example, I don't know, right? Y, Marilena, how many stars do we have in the sky, right? Or are there in the universe? Beats me, right? I don't know. It's a different way to say, I don't know. And we use an expression to do it. So this is like irregular verbs. This is like um, past participles. The only thing we can do is memorizing them. There's no other way. We need to memorize these expressions. If we don't know what they are doing, or mean what they mean, we are going to get confused or we are not going to understand the message. E, for example, there's another expression there. There's something going, going around. So it's like e, going around, something going around. There must be a virus, right? So it's just another way to express that something's going on, something's happening. And then the person says, I'm in tip top shape. Tip top shape is like this person is feeling really good now. So I'm feeling fantastic. So that is tip top shape. So take it easy, right? Take it easy. Take it easy is also an idiom. Y no me voy a poner a traducir take it easy. Tómalo fácil. No, right? It's not like that. What does it mean? Take it easy. Tranquilo. Tranquilo, Camilo, right? So, Sereno Moreno, exactly. Take chele, chele agarrala al suave. <laughs> Cabal, tranquilo, Chele, right? So, eh, take it easy. Eh, don't worry. Be happy. Relax. Ah, take a chill pill. <laughs> exactly. So, son expresiones como las que nosotros ocupamos en español, right? Y que no son informales. Today Bloom. Ajá, there you go. No es que sean informales, sino y son parte del idioma, right? These expressions that you're seeing here, this is not informal English. These are expressions that they use or that native speakers use for everything. At work, eh, on the street, with friends, eh, you name it, right? It, it's, they are just part of the language. So I have actually is something here related to idioms that I want to show you before we continue with this. So let's see. Right. Tengo una pregunta. Uh -huh. Tell me, tell me. Eh, eh, perdón, así en español. Este, en la conversación donde dice Yanni, donde dice Hello, is Luis, ya le dice, This is, this is Janis, this is Yanni. Eh, pero ella está diciendo ella, yo soy, y se puede usar el This is. Ah, good, good question, actually. Y Nelson. Acá se entiende cuando la persona dice, eh, this is Mr. Ruiz, and this is Yanni, que estamos hablando por teléfono, right? Y um, si sí, yo estoy frente a frente, ah, okay. no, ajá, pero acá como estoy hablando por teléfono, eh, sí, así es como él lo dice. Nosotros diríamos, le habla el señor Ruiz. Ah, habla Yanni, este, ah. este, habla fulanito. Ah, okay. This is mm -hmm. nice. All right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Anytime. Now, I will share with you this video in which we're going to see some common idioms or common expressions that we have in English. So let me share my screen again. So here we go. So we're going to see some common uh, expressions in, uh, in English, and we're going to listen to those expressions in context. So we're going to listen to them 
also in some series or movies so that you know, so that you understand how to use them. So here we go. Listen. Hit the sack. Definition, to go to bed. I'm tired, I'm going to hit the sack. There you go, an example. So, hit the sack. Hit the sack, it means I'm going to sleep. Bye-bye, I'm going to hit the sack now. Right, so it's I'm going to sleep, I'm going to bed. So, just another way to express the same idea. And here you have like how to use it in context. I'm tired. I'm going to hit a sack. I'm going to hit the sack. Let's see how some people use this expression. Okay, you know, I think I'm going to hit the sack. Either way. Good game, everyone. But I am beat. I got to hit the sack. I think I'll just hit the sack. I think I'll just hit the sack. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to go hit the sack. Break a leg. Definition, it's used to wish someone luck. You have an exam tomorrow. Break a leg. This is one that I like a lot. So, break a leg. When we tell a person, okay, hey, eh, break a leg. Good luck. Right? It's the same. No le estamos deseando que se vaya a quebrar la pierna. So, no es literal. Es una manera de decir buena suerte. Good luck. Break a leg, right? So, break a leg tomorrow in your test or at work, right? Good luck, everyone. Break a leg. Hey. I just want to say, uh, break a leg, everybody. All right. Break a leg, kid. Um, we'll break a leg tonight. Break a leg. Yeah, break a leg. So I'm here. Okay. Break a leg. You can do it. Break a leg. Break a leg, Chuck. Call it a day. Definition. To decide that you have finished doing something. We're all tired. Let's call it a day. All right. Let's call it a day. So this is something that we use when we are done with something. So, for example, by the end of the class, we can say, all right, you know what, people, let's just call it a day. Como hasta aquí, nada más. We're not going to do anything else. So let's call it a day, right? So when you finish something or when you're done with something, so you can use this expression, <laughs> call it a day, right? Oh, wait, let me see. And... Jesus. All right. So there you go. So let's listen to it. So maybe we should just call it a day. All right, class. I think we can call it a day. Let's call it a day and go home. Let's call it a day. I am tired. I'm going to call it a day. Well, I say we call it a day. Maybe you should just call it a day. Under the weather. Definition, if someone is under the weather, they feel ill. I've been feeling under the weather this week. There you go. So we already knew this one, under the weather. So when someone feels ill, what's the meaning of ill? Sick, right? Is sometimes we can also use this under the weather to express that we are a little bit sad too, right? sad or sick, eh, we could use it in both eh, cases, right? But usually it's mostly used whenever you feel ill or sick. I am just feeling under the weather. Mr. White is feeling a little under the weather this morning. Oh, perhaps I am a little under the weather. I know a lot of us have been feeling under the weather lately. Listen, boy, your sister is a little under the weather. Lemon, you're looking a little under the weather. Spill the beans. Definition, to tell people secret information. Don't spill the beans. 
It's supposed to be a secret. Spill the beans, right? Spill the beans is to tell too much information to people, right? So do we have something similar in Spanish? Do we have a similar expression? Chambroso. Chambroso, no. Es una expresión, not an adjective. Cuando... Como si fuera chisme. Mm, ajá, y si yo quiero saber cómo le digo a esa persona. Hay una expresión para, como para hacerle saber a la persona, hey, contame, hombre. Pero hay una expresión por ahí. Contame el chambre. Contame el chambre. Suelta la sopa. Very good. Nice. So, hey, suelta la sopa, hombre. So, spill the beans. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a buche, yeah. <laughs> nice. Spill the beans, literalmente, es como escupir los frijoles, right? Spill the beans. So, very similar to the expression we have in Spanish, soltar la sopa. So, to tell the information or the secret that we know, right, to other person. So let's see. Well, time to spill the beans. I'm not going to spill any more beans. All right. Somebody in here got beans. Spill them. Spill the beans, old man. Okay, enough of these riddles. Would you guys spill the beans? Spill the beans. See eye to eye. Definition. If two people see eye to eye, they agree with each other. I don't see eye to eye with my mother on many things. All right. To see eye to eye, someone. In this case, this means to agree with somebody about something, right? If I agree with this sentence here. So I don't see eye to eye with my mother on many things. So we don't think the same. We don't agree on many things with my mother. So I would use these expressions. I don't see eye to eye with my mom. So there you go. We didn't know we see eye to eye. No, I know we don't see eye to eye. Russell and I did not see eye to eye on many, many projects. They can see eye to eye. I'm glad Ukraine and the United States were able to see eye to eye. Sir, Agent Merritt and I didn't always see eye to eye. A piece of cake. Definition, something that is very easy to do. There you go. This is a very common expression. So what does it mean? Piece of cake. What's the meaning of that? Chiche. Exactly, exactly. In Spanish, chiche, por no decir la otra, ¿verdad? So, pan comido. Esa es como más, más traducción más directa, ¿eh? The piece of cake, pan comido. Y um, something that is extremely easy, right? So, it's really, really easy. There you go. My last exam was a piece of cake. Yeah, it's a piece of cake. Grace, come on, do it. It'll be a piece of cake. But believe me, with your dance background, it'll be a piece of cake. This will be a piece of cake. You'll see. Come on, it's a piece of cake. How cool. Ah, oh, piece of cake so far. Piece of cake. The last straw. Sure, Definition: The latest problem in a series of problems that makes a situation impossible to accept. Yes, yes, wait. Uh -huh. Yeah, tell me, Ellie. In the, in, in the, a piece of cake, a what? In the last one, he said, a piece of cake. Piece of cake. Uh-huh. In the last one, he said, a piece of cake to fart. Cake. Cake to fart. Mm -hmm. Let's see. A piece of cake to what? Fart. Let me see. I wait. So far, this one. Mm -hmm. Ah, how's mm -hmm. school? A piece of cake so far. Como que tal escuela? Hasta ahorita? Fácil, right? So far, hasta ahorita. Pero, 
so far. Es que ah. yo sabía de far que es lejos. Lejos, exactly. Uh -huh. Pero so en este es caso. Cuando el vuelve bien lejos. Ajá. Pero acuérdese, Eli, no me traduzca literal. Y if you translate no, por eso, literally. Por eso, por eso quiero sí, preguntar por qué. Exactly. Si seguimos, o sea, es, es, these expressions, for example, we cannot translate them literally. Hay varias palabras en, en inglés que tienen diferentes significados dependiendo del contexto, ¿no? Y usualmente cuando tenemos so far en una oración, es como hasta aquí o hasta este punto. Todo bien, ¿verdad? Es lo que trata de decir él. It's okay so far. Y hay otra expresión que dice so far so good. So far so good. Si alguien le dice, hey, ¿cómo van? How's the conversation? ¿Cómo van con la conversación? So far so good. So far so good. So hasta aquí, todo bien. So, right. So, uh, different context, right? But nice question, actually. Good. Thank you. Anytime. And then we have here the last straw. The last straw is something, or we say, making me work late on Friday it was the last straw. So, what do you think it means? Ajá, por ahí, por ahí, cuando algo nos, de plano ya nos colma la paciencia, decimos que es la que, que derramó qué, la gota que derramó, la el, gota vaso. Que derramó el vaso, exacto, la gota que derramó el vaso, so aquí es the last straw, ¿vale? literal la última eh, pajilla, podríamos decir, o la, eh, también la, la paja, ¿no? Es, es, es straw, eh, Podría ser también. So, es como la gota que derramó el vaso para nosotros. Making me, por eso es acá, making me work late on Friday was the last straw. Que me hicieran trabajar hasta tarde el viernes fue la gota que derramó el vaso. Renuncio. Ya el lunes renuncio. No. So, there you go. <laughs> Next one. Well, let's listen to this in context. Definition. The latest problem oh, in a series of problems x a situation impossible to accept. Making me work late on Friday was the last straw. It's just a haircut and some clothes. No, it's the last straw. I can't take any more. Are you kidding me? That's it, Rick. That's the last straw. <laughs> This is the last straw. That is just the last straw. That's it. That's the last straw. Cost an arm and a leg. Definition. To be very expensive. The show is excellent, but the tickets cost an arm and a leg. An arm and a leg. What do we say in Spanish when something is really expensive? Un ojo de la cara. Exactly, un ojo de la cara, very good. Cambia la parte del cuerpo en, en español. So, no es un brazo y una pierna, es un ojo de la cara. So, in English, we use kind of a similar expression. We say, it costs an arm and a leg, right? Hey, I, uh, why don't you buy this jacket, right? Or this cell phone? No, it costs an arm and a leg, so impossible, right? So, there you go. Let's see it in context. Wow. Yeah, it's going to cost an arm and a leg. You take my advice? I did. Thank you again. Karma? <laughs> cost me an arm and a leg. You cost an arm and a leg, so let's get to work. When pigs fly. Definition, something that will never happen. I will go on a date with you when pigs fly. What about this one? When pigs fly, do we have something similar in Spanish? Cuando el infierno se congele. Ah, cuando los cerdos vuelen. Puede ser una. Ajá, cuando el infierno se congele, cuando los cerdos vuelen, o aquí decimos más comúnmente. Cuando, la, cuando las vacas vuelen. Exacto, cuando las vacas vuelen, ¿verdad? So, that is or we use it in the same way, right? To express that something, maybe it's not gonna happen. 
So he, I'm going to win the lottery, right? Yeah, when pigs fly. So don't think so, right? Something that is very unlikely to happen. So let's see. Someday you'll thank me. Yeah, when pigs fly. Yeah, right, when pigs fly. When pigs fly. <laughs> you know, Smithers, I think I'll donate a million dollars to the local orphanage. When pigs fly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, these are just some examples on idioms, right? Now, we might find more uh, expressions. I mean, the, the quantity or the amount of expressions that we can find, it's huge, right? It's, it's, it's a lot. Uh -huh. Tell me. Tell me. Uh, I have a question. Uh -huh. Tell me. Uh, when, when pigs fly in... Uh -huh. Uy, se, se puso en mute el Luis. Perdón, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Luis, uh, algo que no va a suceder. Uh -huh. Exactly. It's uh, uh, uh -huh. I, 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 I say uh, I have a me I have a million dollars. <laughs> a million no. dollars. No, uh, 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 ah, yeah, ah, I yeah, got uh, you. Uh, got you. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh -huh. <laughs> in the future, okay. <laughs> in the future, I'll win a million dollars, right? Wow, okay. Yeah, so, when pigs fly. Like, okay. Uh -huh. Es como para decir, okay. como decir. Uh -huh. Ay, Dios, cuando la vaca Ay, vuelve. Es, es, es como duda. Thank you, teacher. Uh -huh. Nice. Good. Good, Luis. All right. So now that we are a little bit more familiar, eh, let's complete this little exercise about the expressions that we reviewed before. So we have eh, the different expressions in number four and the corresponding definitions that we have in exercise number five. So I will give you just like five minutes for you to write the corresponding idiom next to the definition or the intention that you have here in exercise five. So five minutes, and then we check it together uh, just to be sure that you got the right thing. So five minutes now. The chair. Give me a moment, please. Ajá, uh -huh. yeah. I, no, no, me voy a desconectar. Ah, no sure, sure, sure. Go. Nice. Le ganó el sueño él. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> All right.
All right, did you finish? Not yet? Okay. Two more minutes. Okay, let's see. Let's start checking these expressions. So, what about number one? My stomach hurts badly. What's that? My stomach is killing me. My stomach is killing me. Exactly. It's like it hurts a lot, right? It's killing me. Very good. What about uh, to be very sick? Take it's it easy. Take it easy, no. Is like sick a dog? As sick as a dog, exactly. I'm as sick as a dog. So that is to be very sick. Then number three, to relax, to rest. Take it easy. Take it easy, exactly. Take it easy, relax, take a chill pill, chillax. Number four, uh, not feeling well. Not feeling Under well. Under the weather too. Under the weather, very good. Under the weather, I'm not feeling well. Uh, a little bit sick maybe, or uh, a little bit sad. So, under the weather, very good. Let's see, in great condition. Tip top shape. shape. Tip top shape, uh -huh. tip top shape. So, to feel in great condition. Number six, don't have time to. Can't afford to. Can't afford to? Yes, very good. Can't afford to, but so I can't afford to uh, not working tomorrow, right? I really need to do it. So don't have time to in this case. What about number seven? Uh, many people have the same thing. Many people has the same thing. There's something going around, teacher. There's something going There's around. Something going around. Uh -huh. Yeah, something that is making people feel sick. Exactly. COVID, right? So, no, just kidding. And the last one to phone the office to say you are sick. The last one is probably sick. <laughs> calling sick exactly calling so sick. when you call the office or your boss and you tell him or her mire fíjese que no tengo una gran gripe I, no quiero arriesgarlos a todos en la oficina no puedo llegar ¿verdad? so you call in sick right that's the meaning of that expression okay all right guys we're going to stop right here right we're going to make a little pause with these uh, idioms i'm going to share some expressions with you like common expressions uh, i'm going to share them with you in the chat and tomorrow we're going to keep on reviewing some other expressions and 
probably reviewing some of the ones that we already know uh, that we learned today. So let's see. I'm going to take attendance uh, for the last time. Uh, <coughs> they, it's, let me see, Jenny's turn to stay. Uh, can you stay, Jenny, the last 10 minutes of the class? Yes, teacher. All right, excellent. Nice, Jenny. Okay, then. So here we go with the attendance. Ana Beatriz Campos de Guzman. Yes, teacher. All right, thank you very much, Beatriz. Uh, next, Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga. Thank you, teacher. Thank you very much, Blanquita. Uh, Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you very much, Charlie. Then we have Carlos Javier Crespin Lopez. Present teacher. Thank you very much, uh, Carlos Javier, nice. Then we have uh, Christian Ernesto Lasso. Christian, I guess he lost connection. So we continue with Denise Grisel Brizuela. I guess she lost connection too. So we continue with Ember Giovanni Polio. Ember, Ember, no, missed in action too. So we have next. Francisca. Oh, there you go. No se le va. Todavía, todavía no, Jesús, todavía no, tranquilo, tranquilo. Take it easy. Estaba dormido y se despertó. No, just kidding. Just kidding, Jesús Eduardo. So let's see. Francisca Elizabeth Martínez. Present teacher. Okay, very good, very good. <clears throat> Next one. Hoy sí, Jose Eduardo Guzmán Álvarez. Bueno, ya había dicho presente. So. <laughs> Ahí está. <laughs> nice. Next, Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Present. Thank you very much, JC. Next, Karen Vanessa Murataya. Karen Vanessa, I guess we lost her. So we continue with Luis Alfonso Martinez. Sí, present teacher. Thank sí, you sí. very much, Luis. We continue with Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. Present. Thank you very much, Maria Elena. We continue with Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Nelson. Present well. teacher. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Omar Francisco Hernandez. Present, present. Present. Thank you very much, Omar. Next, Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present teacher. Thank you, Oscar. And Jenny Suleima Santos. Present. All right, excellent. Okay, then. So, well, thank you very much for being part of today's class, guys. Uh, have a good night. Take care. Get some rest. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, teacher. Bye-bye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. All right. Vamos a ver. Vaya, Jenny. Permítame. Chair. Ok. ¿Qué tal, Jenny? ¿Cómo está? Bien. Ya can cansada, ya lista para ir a descansar un ratito. Hoy sí, pero los lunes me pasa. Yo creo que uno se acostumbra al fin de semana. Sí, yo creo que todos andamos así como en modo lunes de escuela. Ajá. Tener que... Pero ya, ya Marte uno está bien. Sí, ya Marte ya uno ya entraba en calor. Sí. <ríe> nice. Chivísimo. Bueno. Vaya, Jenny. En estos ocho minutitos que, que nos quedan, ya le, ya le robé dos. Este, bueno, los vamos a ocupar y en caso de que usted tenga dudas eh, con respecto a algún tema de este módulo. Y como siempre les digo, puede incluso ser un tema que no tenga nada que ver con la clase. Puede ser de un módulo anterior alguna duda que usted haya mantenido siempre con respecto al idioma y, y la quiera resolver, hoy es cuando Jenny, hoy aproveche de preguntar lo que usted quiera. 
Y ese teacher que siento que dudas no tengo, solo que siento Ajá. que a mí lo que me cuesta es como la pronunciación. Ajá. A veces. Ajá, entonces okay. sí me ayuda quizás con algunas cosas para aprender a pronunciar, porque no sí. siempre es como, aunque uno se puede el abecedario en inglés, no uh -huh. siempre es como, como uh -huh. en el abecedario. O sea, Ajá, eso. exacto. Bye. Creo que una de las cosas más eh, engañosas quizás que tiene el inglés es, es la pronunciación, ¿no? Hay palabras que siguen cierto patrón y hay otras palabras que pueden repetir ese patrón, pero suenan completamente diferente. En inglés usualmente no es lo que vemos, ¿no? Como no nos podemos guiar por lo que vemos, sino que eh, ni modo, no hay cosas que sí las tenemos que casi que memorizar en cuestión de pronunciación. Especialmente creo que nos pasa con las vocales. Los sonidos vocales en inglés son un pain in the neck. Este porque en, nosotros en español tenemos cinco sonidos vocales, en inglés tenemos como 14 o 15, entonces es como de, puya, vea, una letra A se puede pronunciar de varias maneras, igual sí. que una letra O, una letra E, pueden sonar diferente, y ahí es donde al juntarse, digamos, en otras palabras, es cuando uno dice, puya, pero ¿y, y por qué si en esta palabra se pronuncia y por decirle algo, bought, ¿verdad? I bought a cake yesterday. Y en esta otra es cough, right? I have, the, I have a cough, right? La tos. Se sigue el mismo OU, right? El, el, el OU y la GH. Eh, se sigue toda esa, esa, esa combinación, es la misma en las dos palabras, pero no tienen nada que ver. Bot y cough, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí es donde la gente se me confunde. ¿Qué podemos hacer para mejorar? Creo que una clave para, para mejorar la pronunciación y para aprender a hablar inglés también fluido y con buena pronunciación es imitar, imitar a alguien que hable bonito inglés, ¿no? Que usted considere que, que le gusta el inglés de esa persona. Uh -huh. en mi caso... Y a mí siempre me gustó este, cómo hablaba y cómo se expresaba eh, un host de televisión, Jimmy Kimmel. Creo que les puse un video de él eh, hace unos días. Eh, a mí me gusta cómo se expresa, o sea, cómo habla el inglés. Eh, me parece súper bien. Entonces yo trataba de, 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 como de ir repitiendo, ajá, de ir repitiendo lo que él va diciendo al mismo tiempo. O sea, ver un video más de un vez, o sea, el mismo video va a estarle dando a manera de que de sincronizar la forma en la que yo hablo con la forma en la que él habla. No Ajá. solo es a leer el subtítulo, pues yo puedo poner el subtítulo en inglés y puedo repetir las palabras tal cual como él la dice, pero no solo es eso, sino también los ups and downs que ellos tienen a la hora de hablar, ese como ritmo que ellos tienen. Ajá que es lo que a veces a nosotros se nos oye plano, incluso porque así es el español, muchas veces es como plano, y, y, y aprendemos a hablar un inglés igual, o sea, como sin ritmos, así es simple, ¿verdad? Eh, y no suena igual, y uno dice, no siento que, que hable bien, o no siento que no me escucho que hablo en inglés bien, ¿no? Y es eso, no es solo la pronunciación, es también eso, la, la entonación. El tono, uh -huh. Ajá. Es bien importante esa musicalidad que tiene el idioma y eh, muy importante copiarlo, ¿no? Entonces, esto es algo que a mí me sirvió. Aparte, eh, como no podemos seguir una regla específica para todas las palabras, sino que solo nos queda memorizarlas y de pronto repetir repetir lo que estas personas dicen y tratar de imitarlos nos lo vuelve un poco más fácil que estar por ejemplo eh, buscando palabras en, en, en internet que también se puede hacer y literal estar escuchando palabra por palabra puede ser verdad que no sirva pero no es lo mismo como, como 
escuchar las palabras en contexto y en todo el lado. Sí. Y en ah. una oración, porque ah. tampoco, o sea, como cuando se unen dos palabras que usted explicaba. Exacto. Es diferente que cuando uno las pronuncia separadas. Ah, por ejemplo, o sea, todas esas cositas que, que, que parecen bien insignificantes, de unir una, una consonante con una vocal, por ejemplo, y parecería que, ¿para qué lo voy a hacer? Dice uno, o sea, se me entiende, ¿verdad? Pero a la hora de que o sea, de, de nosotros quiere sonar natural, sí es bien importante. Ahí sí es. Las contracciones, sí, también, porque he visto, Exacto. por ejemplo, en canciones o así, usan uh -huh. mucho así, no son como oraciones completas. Ajá. Por eso a veces uno no logra entender porque siento que no, no es como uno lo está estudiando ahorita porque estamos en Ajá. <risa> Ajá. Entonces no se sí. logra entender las oraciones a veces, o sea, uh -huh. normalmente. Sí, o sea, es, es, bien, es bien yuca porque, o sea, yo me acuerdo que cuando yo estaba en las clases era como de, puchica, ¿verdad? o sea, no, no identifico pero ni el verb to be en, la, en las canciones, de ese, o sea, ¿qué pasa? ¿verdad? ¿Qué está pasando? Tan así estoy de mal, decía yo. Y realmente uno entiende las estructuras y uno cuando lee la letra es como de, ah, sí, aquí está. ¿verdad? Ahí entiende, es cierto. Ah, cabal, y ahí uno lo va viendo y es como de, pero ¿y por qué, por qué no lo entiendo al escucharlo? ¿verdad? Porque se me van un montón de palabras a la hora de escuchar. Y es por eso, porque lo, lo, lo unen, ¿verdad? Usan un sonido eh, que es similar a lo que nosotros tenemos en español, de decir el, eh, ya vengo, me voy a ir a la tienda. Todo de corrido, ¿verdad? No decimos... Ajá. Ya vengo, mamá, voy a ir a la tienda. No decimos así, ¿verdad? So, no. Lo mismo en inglés. No vamos, no, no vamos a escuchar esa, esos sonidos cortados, sino que eh, todo de un solo. Right? Se escucha todo unido a veces. Y eso es lo que les digo. Suena que ellos hablan rápido, pero no. Ellos están contractando los sonidos, los están uniendo, sí. usan contracciones. Eh, y eso es lo que hace que que uno se pierda de repente en, 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 en las cosas que están diciendo, ¿no? Sí, Pero, porque sí lo usan bastante, se me ha fijado. A veces sí. en Spotify, como de, y usted puede escuchar la canción y le aparece la letra. La letra. Entonces, ah. se escucha y yo, ay, no entiendo. <risa> <risa> y ya cuando pongo la letra, ahí yo digo, ah, ya, Ajá. ya, ya. Así Entonces, si lo, si lo leo, si lo entiendo, pero si lo escucho. <risa> vale, con, la, con la, las canciones funciona también este, no es una mala idea de hecho digamos tomar una canción y agarrar la letra ¿ve? o sea tratar de imitar el sonido que hace el, el cantante aunque en música es un poquito más difícil y a veces pronunciarlo tan rápido como ellos lo hacen o, o en la manera en la que ellos lo hacen que a veces incluso puede ser diferente a lo que habitualmente se hace, ¿no? solo por el mero hecho de hacer algo más artístico. Y, pero es igual, se puede. Más con las canciones en inglés, y esas clásicas, ¿verdad? Que no son tan... Antiguas. Ajá, cabal. O sea, que, 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 que son calmadas, que uno puede ir, como entender, ir, ir entendiendo todo lo que van diciendo y lo puede ir leyendo. Eh, con los Beatles, eh, uno aprende un montón, por ejemplo, es de las que, eh, los grupos con los que empecé, por ejemplo, con el inglés, pero se siente bien sencillo, las letras son bien sencillas, entonces no, eh, no cuesta tanto, ¿no? Pero también cada quien, ¿no? Cada quien elige el grupo, el género. Sí, sí lo que voy a hacer es, bueno, lo que se nos dijo la vez anterior también, de conseguir un libro. Uh -huh, ahí exacto. para conocer vocabulario. Y ahí voy a Sí, todo eso al final eh, sirve, ¿no? O sea, al final el construir el, el léxico, el vocabulario de uno, involucra todo, la palabra, la pronunciación, el contexto en el que se usa, lo que les decía, no es, no es solo buscar el significado, sino es el paquete completo. La gramática sí siento que la, la entiendo, hmm. sí la entiendo y logro así, siempre a veces es cuando se, se confunde. Ajá. Pero sí siento que sí lo entiendo. Ajá. Pero la pronunciación es que a veces, ay, no, qué difícil. Eso. Sí, es de la, creo que es de las cositas que uno va, va arreglando, ¿verdad? pero con, con tiempo. Este, como que entender la idea de la gramática hasta cierto punto es como fácil, 
Ajá. En el sentido de que si uno la memoriza, la estudia, sí. se queda, ¿no? Pero la pronunciación es algo que se va construyendo de a poquito. Y uno con, con, la, práctica. Tiempo, con la práctica, uno con el tiempo, ya cuando ya eh, tiene algo de vocabulario y uno ya puede como relacionar algunas palabras, se hace la idea, aunque uno no conozca la palabra, de cómo se pronuncia, aunque uno realmente no conozca la palabra, ¿no? Y eh, que es lo que igual de pronto nos pasa en el español, hay palabras en español que son nuevas para nosotros, pero las podemos pronunciar, y eh, aunque no sepamos qué significan, y lo mismo llega a pasar en inglés. Con tiempo. <ríe> nice. Chivísimo. Bueno, yo... No, a la orden, cualquier cosa, consulta, este, estoy a la orden y, y pues ahí estamos. Eh, gracias de hecho por su tiempo y pues nos veremos mañana entonces, Jenny. Hasta mañana. Ok, buenas noches, bye. Good night. bye bye. Bye. Bye.